Hey guys, my name's Sam and welcome to PrepMedic. This week's video, I am in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan at the Crestline Manufacturing Plant and we're gonna be taking an in-depth look at the CCL 150. All right guys, so behind me, I have the CCL 150 by Crestline. Now this ambulance is defined by three main factors, and that's safety, durability, and value. So this has an extruded aluminum frame, which keeps the patient and the provider safe in the event of a crash. It also has a lifetime structural and paint warranty, as well as a multiplex electrical system. So today, we're gonna go through the outside of the ambulance, we're gonna go to the inside, and we're gonna look at all the features that Crestline has included in this rig. Let's talk about some of the external features on this ambulance. So the lighting is by Whalen, and you can get these lights in a couple different configurations and colors, but in general, this is going to be a pretty standard layout for you. In the front of the ambulance, you're gonna notice that there are actually speakers mounted in the grill. Now these are for your sirens, and what's really nice about that is it keeps a lot of the dirt, grime, and water out of it. Now in the past, one of the problems with having your sirens inside the engine compartment is that it makes it really, really loud in the cab. However, Crestline has put a soundproof barrier behind it and built a box around the speaker. So when you're riding in it, it's actually no louder than any other rig while the sirens are going. So coming around the side of the ambulance, you'll notice at the top, those are four inch radius corners and that increases fuel efficiency and a little bit of road noise. Now the paint that Crestline has used is a powder coat technology. So they call it their Crest Coat, which is their branded name. And what's really cool about that is it's very, very sturdy. So it's a powder that goes on the side of the ambulance, they put it in an oven, and it adheres to the metal. So that means it's very sturdy. It does have a lifetime paint warranty, which is something you're not gonna see from a lot of other manufacturers. Now, when I open one of these cabinets, this is the O2 cabinet. And the first thing I wanna mention is that you see here, you've got a rubber seal, and then you have a second one right here. Every single door in this ambulance has two seals on it, which one keeps a lot of the grime out of the inside. So it's gonna reduce repair costs, it's gonna keep things cleaner. But what I really like about that is it significantly reduces road noise. You don't have a lot of air gaps in the side doors or anything like that. So this is a really neat feature to have. So this cabinet here is the O2 cabinet. And this has their O2 to go system, which is just a really simple ramp system to get the oxygen tank in and out of the ambulance without having to lift it. But what's really cool about it is that it doesn't actually have any hydraulics or any electronics on it. So you don't have anything that's going to break. It's literally a ramp. You take that out, you pull it out on the dolly, you replace the tank and you push it back up. You don't even have to take it off the dolly to secure it in here. So a really, really cool feature to have. All right, coming next door, we have the electrical cabinet. Now there is some room for storage down here, but behind these coverings, you have the multiplex electrical system. And what's unique about this is that it can be diagnosed remotely. So say you have a short or your lights go out or something happens in the box electrically. You do not have to take this into a dealership or a shop to have it diagnosed. Somebody can log into a computer and actually access all the information from this box on their screen and tell you exactly what's wrong with the ambulance. What's really cool with that is that they're able to do some resets remotely and it will reduce downtime. Plus you don't have to take the ambulance in for a simple diagnostic when it's just a fuse or something that was tripped. So a really, really cool system to have on this ambulance. Below that you have the inverter, which is pretty standard on this rig. One of the options you can get is an auto eject port. Uh, this is a nice feature because we've all pulled away with a shoreline still attached to the ambulance and this will ensure that doesn't happen. You have an indicator light up here to tell you if it is plugged in and working. All right, the driver's side rear of the ambulance, you've got a pretty large cabinet. What's cool about this cabinet is that it can be accessed from both the inside of the ambulance and the outside. So if I were stocking this, I'd probably put my splints or C-collars up here because they're items that I'll oftentimes want to take from the ambulance and bring to a fall victim or a car accident. But the other really nice thing about this is that if I'm in the ambulance and I decide that I need to splint something, I can just open this glass door on the inside and grab it. Now, what you'll notice about these shelves is these are aluminum, which is a super nice feature on this rig. 
The other cool thing is that right now you'll see this has no lip. But if you take this, these are meant to be reversible. You can turn this upside down and it'll give you that lip depending on what you're storing up here. You've got a fire extinguisher mount down here and then a couple cabinets that are not accessible on the inside, but these would be for more of your items that you're not going to have to access in a hurry while you're in the patient compartment. Coming to the back of the ambulance, there's a couple really cool features I wanna show you guys. So down here, this bumper is not attached to the actual module. So if you were to back up into something, which I have done on multiple occasions, this is not gonna damage the module itself. This bumper will actually fold in and drop down. So when they do the replacement, they only have to replace the bumper instead of doing extensive module repairs. On the windows, these are all flush mounted windows, which one, it's going to reduce corrosion. It makes it look pretty slick. And what's really cool is it reduces road noise. You don't have anything that's interfering with the aerodynamics of the rig. On the side, you're gonna see that this window is also flush mounted. So it really, really reduces the noise in the back of the ambulance when you're riding in it. On the back end gate, you have the Crestline logo here, but this can be completely customized to whatever you want, whether you want it to say paramedic, ALS, your agency name, they can make that say whatever you want. It has a backup camera and a pretty standard light configuration to go with it. All right, so coming around to this side of the rig, you've got a couple really cool features. So in this cabinet, it's pretty standard actually. You've got your stair chair area, and this is a Ferno stair chair. It's absolutely massive and it fits in here no problem. You've got your scoop boards, your split boards, and backboards will fit uh, without any difficulty. And then up in here, you've got room for your straps and C collars. Over the wheel well, you have this rubber piece. So a lot of rigs run around with these that are chrome and they're all bent up, uh, misshapen after only a short period of time. But for this one, you've got this really, really strong rubber material and it's super easy to replace. So your maintenance guys can just order this part and put it on in a matter of minutes. It's a really nice feature to have. That being said, you know, it's pretty sturdy, so I'm not worried about this getting torn up or anything like that. On the side of the rig, we've got another compartment and this is another dual access compartment. So you can see in there, you can get at that from the inside of the patient compartment or you can grab it on the outside. This is where you'd keep your first out bag so you can just grab it off the side of the truck. But then if you're going in route and you need something from it, you can just pull it into the patient compartment, no problem. You do have some electrical outlets back here, which are super nice to have. You can charge your suction device or monitor if you keep it in there. Like I said before, you have those flush mount windows, which reduces the grime and also the wind noise. And then when we open up the side door, you've got two oxygen tank holders here, and they can be resized to fit whatever size tank you need on this rig. But one of the really cool features of stepping up is they've actually lowered the second step. So it's not a big step for, to walk somebody into the back of the ambulance. You know, we all know that not every patient needs the stretcher. So a lot of times we're taking patients, sitting them up in the captain's chair or on the bench seat. And when they're walking up before, it would be one really big step and it was really hard to get them in there. But with this step, it's super low to the ground, super easy to get up into this ambulance. So stepping into the back of the ambulance, the layout is very standard for ambulance. However, there are a couple key features back here I wanna talk about. The first thing is their Crest Clean, which is a powder coating technology very similar to what they have on the outside, except in here, this is antimicrobial. So it makes it a lot more cleanly for you and the patient. Plus it's very durable, so you're not gonna be scuffing up these cabinets or the shelving units as you move things around. What's cool about these is these all have a latch mechanism on them, so they're plexiglass sliders, which is pretty standard, but these actually have this latch here that keeps them closed while you're going down the road. Additionally, if you need to restock a lot of stuff, you can just lift up on this bar and this entire window will open up and allow you really easy access in and out of this cabinet. Like on the outside, all the shelving is aluminum and these are reversible. So right now you've got the lip here, so it's gonna prevent stuff from sliding out, but you could reverse this and have just a smooth cabinet. These cabinets all have this LED strip lighting, which I really like. You know, it looks cool when you turn off all the other lights in the ambulance, but it also really helps you find all your equipment inside each cabinet. So coming down here, you've got the electrical system. 
Now, this is pretty bare bones, but it's all the things that you need in a rig. So you don't have fancy screens that are gonna break. It's just solid equipment. So over here, you have your temperature module. This also has a light timer, your patient code markers. And then these are all the switch for your electronics back here. So you've got your suction, your exhaust fan, cabinet lights, your LED lights in the ceiling, and then you have your audio level knob. So you can listen to the radio back here if you have a student, um, or if you're on a long distance transfer and your patient wants to listen to the radio, a nice thing to have. Below that, you've got your suction unit, oxygen ports, and what you're gonna notice about this entire thing here is that it's actually a lot longer than a lot of other rigs. And that's because they've taken this seat, the CPR seat, and moved it to the actual position for CPR. So if you have a patient here, predominantly in other rigs, this seat will be further up and it will position you closer to the head than the chest and it makes it hard to do CPR, put on EKGs, anything like that. So this seat is actually positioned exactly where you need it. You'll notice you've got the six point harness. So this still allows you to kind of get up out of your seat, uh, do work and still remain safe back here. Now up above, you have this ducted air conditioning system. What's really nice about this is that it runs the entire length of the patient. So if you have somebody that's hypothermic or hyperthermic, you can adjust the AC and adjust these vents right down onto your patient and it's gonna be very beneficial for them. And you can also direct them away from the attendant. You know, the last thing you wanna be doing is cooking back here as you have somebody that's hypothermic. So you can adjust these vents so they're not aiming at the attendant or the paramedic in the back of the rig. You know, a small feature, but something that I think is really cool are the IV hooks here. So a lot of times in other rigs that I've worked out of, you have these IV hooks hanging down from the ceiling and they do secure slightly. However, they still go back and forth and the IV tubing can whip you or the patient in the face. But this one is right up against this AC unit. So it holds it up against that. It keeps everything from moving and just really, really secure. So I really like this here. I don't know why other rigs are not making them with this. Now, these cabinets here, we kind of talked about them a little bit. You can use them for whatever you need in your service. These two here can be opened from the outside of the ambulance and access. So that's a nice feature. You can have something you need on the inside and the outside. The back of the ambulance, you have a clock, which is necessary for you know time stamping if you're doing like a stroke alert, something like that or an intervention, you can see exactly what time it is, or even for CPR, you know, time your two minutes on this clock. You do have driver intention indicators up here. So brake light, turn signals on either side, you can tell when you're about to make a turn so you're not caught off guard if you're up doing patient care. On this side of the ambulance, you have these cabinets, which are pretty standard, but what's nice about these is that you can just open them. This latch allows them to open very easily and they're super deep. They've got the LED lighting in them, uh, keeps things really organized. In this one, I've put some just sample bins so you can kind of get an idea of how big they are um, and how organized they'll stay once you put some supplies up here. So uh, nice cabinets up above the bench seat. The bench seat itself has two of the six point harnesses. Once again, these allow you to sit in and you can get a little bit of motion and still do patient care. Below the seat here, uh, this actually has a ton of storage, and this has more storage than I've seen in a lot of other ambulance. So you've got the wheel well there, but that doesn't take up a whole lot of space. And then in here, you can keep any number of supplies or bulkier items. On this side, just to keep things looking clean, and you can use this as another workspace if you need to put like a drug box, something here. You've got this sliding door that will give you access to your trash can, your sharp spin. Uh, and then when you pull this bench seat up, this will actually just expose both of them and make it really easy to change in a GIF. All right, finally coming to the back of the ambulance. Up here, you have your glove holders. So these are just secured by magnets. You can open them up, replace your gloves, you know, small, medium, large, or whatever you need for your service. And then over here, this cabinet is where I've predominantly kept like medications, stuff back here. You can get a lock for this. So if you need to secure something in here, you can. And these are just shaded glass. And then in here, you've got a lot of room for a drug box, monitor, whatever you need to keep there for your service. So just a nice big cabinet for your storage. Behind the seat here, you've got a lot of space and you can basically use this for whatever you need. It's really nice because it allows you to put the captain's seat forward and back. 
And that kind of brings me to the space of this ambulance. You know, this I think is a smaller model than you would expect from a lot of American rigs. However, there's a lot of leg room, a lot of room to work around the patient. You know, walking to that side of the patient, you're not, you know, sidestepping or trying to make yourself really small. You've got a lot of access on both sides, makes it really easy to care for your patients. And then the headroom up here, this is a very tall unit. Um, I'll show the specifications of this box back here, but I can stand straight up and not hit my head, which is really nice. You know, this, of course, is compatible with almost any kind of structure mounting you need, whether that's striker auto load, uh, furnos, whatever you have is going to work in here and they're gonna be able to fit it in the back of this rig. All right, last but not least, let's talk about some of the options with the chassis of this rig. So you can get this in a couple options. You can get this with the Ford 350 Super Duty, or you can get this with the Chevy 3500. So coming into the front, you know, the concept of the chassis follows the rest of the ambulance. It kind of removes all the unnecessary items. So you don't have any fancy displays or anything in the front of the rig. However, what you do have is very dependable electronics. So in here, you can see you can control the patient compartment with temperature. You can get that ready. If you're going to somebody that's hypothermic or hyperthermic, you can start prepping the patient compartment to whatever temperature you need. You also have the ability to take the keys out, keep the ambulance running, uh, stop the backup alarm. You've got your primary secondary lights, all your scene lights, siren options here. And then right here is where you'd keep your cup holders, which is very important. And in this compartment, it has room for gloves, map books, whatever else you need to carry with you in the front of the ambulance. Up above, you do have a light. So if you're looking at maps or trying to write a report, you can turn that on. It's got a red or a white feature and then a standard backup camera here. That's all I have for this video, guys. If you have any questions about anything I talked about, please leave them in the comments down below. This was a really fun project to work on, and I'm really hoping to get the chance to do things like this in the future. So if you haven't done so already, hit that like and subscribe button, and I will see you next week.